ओके वेलकम टू क्वेस्ट यूट्यूब चैनल कोर डॉट नेट कोर सो वॉट आर बी डूइंग टूडे राइट टूडे विल बी कवरिंग शी शार्प इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन अराउंड गार्बेज कलेक्टर सो गैस दिस इज गोइंग टू बी अन आवर ऑफ वीडियो एंड इन दिस वन आवर विल बी कवरिंग ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन विच कवर्स कॉन्सेप्ट लाइक मैनेज अनमैनेज ऑब्जेक्ट जनरेशन जी सी जीरो जी सी वन जी सी टू डिस्ट्रक्टर्स डिस्पोज पैटर्न फाइनलाइज यूजिंग की वर्ड मेमरी लीक्स स्ट्रॉन्ग रेफरेंसेस एंड वीक रेफरेंसेस राइट सो दिस इज गोइंग टू बी वन आवर ऑफ वीडियो एंड विल बी कवरिंग ऑल दिस ट्वेंटी क्वेश्चन आई एम प्रिटी श्योर इफ यू गो थ्रू दिस कंप्लीट वन आवर यू शुड बी एबल टू हैंडल एनी काइंड ऑफ गार्बेज कलेक्टर क्वेश्चन इन शी शॉप इंटरव्यूज राइट एंड वेरी क्विकली डाउन इन द कॉमेंट्स लिंक यू कैन सी आवर शी शॉप इंटरव्यू क्वेश्चन वीडियो विच इज ऑफ वन आवर प्लीज गो एंड वॉच दैट ऑल्सो you know i'm sure that if you go through that video right you should be able to face any she sharp interview question in a very confident way so let us get started with the first question around garbage collector in she sharp explain garbage collector or what is gc garbage collector in short form is also termed as gc so garbage collector is nothing but it is a background process it is a background process which runs undeterministically and cleans unreferenced and managed objects so you can see here there are uh, three things you know which uh, you need to highlight you know when you are giving this answer garbage collector is nothing but it is a background process which runs undeterministically undeterministically means it runs uh, depending on lot of situations you know we cannot predict you know when it will run it is not that it runs in every minute or uh, in every interval it runs looking at you know what is the cpu memory or must be how the processor is how your application health is and so on right so it runs undeterministically and it cleans or removes unreferenced manage objects from the memory manage objects from the memory right so again i repeat the answer and then we will go more in depth into this answer garbage collector is nothing but it is a background process which runs undeterministically and cleans unreferenced manage objects remember that in interview it is very important that your vocabulary should be i i will not say stylish but it should be like really technically good and this is very specifically you know for students you know or for uh, candidates you know who are from vernacular medium means whose english is not the first language right so must be it will take some time for you to uh, understand you know how to speak about speak these kind of uh, definitions but i would say that practice remember that working in a company and clearing a interview are two different things and when your answer is coming polished it is coming with the right technical vocabulary you are hitting at the right point right so look at my answer garbage collector is a background process which runs undeterministically and cleans unreferenced manage objects so how does a garbage collector know when to clean the objects so garbage collector cleans the objects you know once they are out of scope right so just to iterate you know what we have said in the previous video so if you remember we said that when a method runs right we have two memories which are created internally stack and heap right so what happens now for example if we take this condition out here right of this code there will be an object created called as x so there will be a pointer here first right so there will be a pointer created right and later on when when new ob when a object is assigned over here right that object instance is created on the heap right so that so the so the data is actually stored on the heap so there is a pointer and the actual data is stored on the heap right afterwards what happens you know after this point after this point what happens is this x object goes out of scope so once the x goes out of scope right this whole thing here gets uh this memory gets released but this memory out here this object out here is still there in the heap and at that time you know garbage collector comes in right it comes undeterministically right we don't know when it will come it will come and he will actually go and clean this object and release it back to the operating system right so in other words when does the garbage collector clean the object you know when he knows that an object which is there in the heap does not have a reference in the stack or in other words when it goes out of scope so out of scope means now this is the start of the scope and this is the end of the scope this curly brackets right so once from this point onwards it goes out of scope and then only garbage collector goes and cleans it right so answering from the interview perspective 
when does the garbage collector clean the managed manage object when he knows that it does not have any reference on the stack or in other words when the object goes out of scope is it possible to check how gc works can we see this heap memory can we look into the internals of garbage collector visually yes it is possible to analyze gc it is possible to see that how much memory is consumed by dotnet application how many times the gc has ran by using something called as performance counters performance counters are counters or they are measures of events in a software which allows us to do analysis these counters are installed when the software is installed or and some and many of the counters are installed when the operating system is installed if you want to go and see the performance counters right you can go and you can use something called as perfmon so you can you can see this performance counters out here so you can just type perf, perf performance monitor and you see this small tool in the operating system and um, we can go and we can just see the counters you can see at this moment i am seeing a counter here called as processor time i can go and i can add more counters here uh, and you can see there are counters and counters and counters right you can measure about the processor you can measure about sql server you can measure about dot net you can measure about anything what do you think right so for example when you are talking about uh, dot net application you can see here we can go and we can go to this dot net clr memory and we can go and we can add these performance counters right so i can go and i can add like this this performance counters and i can start seeing uh you know the internals right so performance counters are nothing but you know they are uh they are counters they are measures of events in a software you know where we can measure events like that how many times a garbage collector ran you know what is the processor time how many how many how much time does the application took to download a file or something right so we can measure anything any kind of event right and depending on the event you will have measures for example if this is a processor time this is a measure this is a garbage handle the count the number of counts is a measure right so performance counters are measures of events in software which allows us to do analysis these counters are installed when the software is installed or when the operating system is installed now the good news here is that we don't have to go and use this perfmon it is definitely very nice tool right but as a developer you know microsoft has given this performance counters inside visual studio itself so we can go and we can track performance counters right inside visual studio so if you go and if you click on this build out here right for example now you can see out here i am having this big for loop and what this big for loop is doing is that it is creating a instance of some class and then destroying it right so after this scope it will go off creating the instance and then uh, you know it goes out of scope right so now definitely you know for this kind of code the garbage collector has to work very hard right so uh, you know let us go and run this and let us see the performance counters and you can also see out here i have put a console dot read you know why i have put a console dot read so that i can get organized you know so so before i run the performance counters i i would be able to select the performance counters and after that when i press enter then you know we can go and we can do the analysis because if i just go and if i don't put any console dot read right it will just start counting the counters and we will not get time to um uh you know select and choose right so that's why i put a console dot read so there is a console dot read after that there is a very big for loop right a huge for loop out there and in this for loop we are creating a instance and then it is getting destroyed we are creating a instance and then it is going out of scope and we would like to see that in such case how does the the internal dot net memory looks like so let us go to debug out here in the debug you can see something called as the performance profiler so i'm going to go and click on this performance profiler now before i go and show this demo right you must be wondering that oh this is a dot net interview question or a c sharp interview question tutorial why why is he showing demos so remember that when i'm showing you demos right what happens is when you give a answer to the interviewer you would be pretty confident on what you are what you are saying right point number 1 second yes it's a interview question course but there is nothing harm in having more knowledge isn't it at the end of the day you can't clear a interview if you don't have in depth knowledge right so have patience you know i'm sure that after this lesson right you would be knowing garbage collector internally well right 
just a small point out there so here you can see there is something called as a dot net performance counters and you can see there are many other things as well here for example i want to go and measure you know that how is the dot net object allocated and deallocated i want to measure that what is the cpu usage right so whenever you are talking about measuring performance right then this is your best bet performance profiler so in dot net this performance profiler is your best bet to know what is happening internally so i've selected performance counters i will say start when i start right what happens is the application will also start running but remember we had put a console dot read you know and why i had put a console dot read because i can get chance to choose the performance counters you know or else what happens is uh, you know the performance counter will start counting out here and we won't be able to see it right so at this moment our interest is to see the garbage collector heap size that is our main interest we would like to see that how does the garbage collector heap size works right so you can see here i'm going to go and and press enter now and there is the garbage collector heap size there are many other counters out here we'll see some of them in the coming video right in the coming in the coming moment so i'll just press enter and let us see what happens so if you see there it is you can see if you if you if you remember the code right the code was creating objects and destroying it creating objects and destroying it right so this is very much visible here in this garbage collector heap size you can see the object is getting created it goes high and then it goes low it goes high and then it goes low it goes high and then it goes low right so answering the question can we go and see the internals of uh, the garbage collector yes you can by using performance counters does garbage collector clean primitive data types primitive data types means integer double and so on the answer is no right for example let us i i go and i comment this so let me go and comment this up right comment uh, where is the comment so if i comment this and let us say i i put some primitive data type out here like index is equal to 10 into i is equal to 20 right something like this uh you would see that there is no change in the uh in the gc heap size because these values are allocated on the stack and they remain on the stack and when the stack goes off everything goes off right so let us go and run this again uh run our profiler again and let us see that do we see the gc heap size changing right does is the gc working remember the gc heap size is also a measure saying that how much the garbage collector is running right or i'll say that if you see the heap size going up and down very rapidly that means the garbage collector is running very hard you know to clean your memory right so let us see what happens i'm going to go and press enter you can see over here there's a flat line going on absolutely flat right as compared to the zigzags over here you can see this is a complete flat line which is going on which is an indication that the gc heap size has no connection with the value types and the garbage collector does not clean the value type so answer here is that garbage collector has no connection with cleaning up the primitive data types now the next question is on managed versus unmanaged objects now before we go to that question a choti si request a choti si gujarish right a little bit of request out here we take a lot of hard work to create these videos right we have to create the code we have to create the samples we have to record it cameras dialogues many things goes out there captioning right so if you really like our videos please go down in the youtube comments and say that what do you think you know about our videos you know what is your feedback around our videos right so please do let us know so let us start with the next question now manage versus unmanaged object what is the difference between managed resources versus unmanaged resources or the interviewer can also make a create a twist you know saying that managed object versus unmanaged objects or they can say managed code versus unmanaged code right so what is the difference between managed versus unmanaged resources managed resources are those that are pure dot net code pure dot net classes dot net objects you know for example you know objects like this one you know the sum class sum class is a pure dot net class right or you can see this object you know which belongs to dot net so anything which is controlled by the runtime that is clr the objects which are directly in the control of the clr are termed as managed resources unmanaged resources are those 
which are not in other words you know for example if you open up a file a file handle right a com object you make a connection with the database like like to sql server when you make a connection object that object is again not in control of the clr you can see i have written a code out here which is actually allocating some memory now this is again an unmanaged memory an unmanaged object right an unmanaged code so this code you know uh, is termed as an unmanaged code in other words codes like file handles pinned memories com objects database connection you know something which the clr did not create it the clr did not use that memory it has been created from external right so managed objects are those you know which are in control of the clr and unmanaged objects are those which are not in the control of clr they are some application they are they are some com objects like must be written in c++ or must be file handles must be database connection the next question which is very much connected with this is that does garbage collector clean unmanaged objects the answer is no no and no right the object which are created by the clr those objects can only garbage collector can clean it because he is aware of what kind of objects they are how to destruct how to destroy them how to how to revert back that memory right but he is not aware that how a c++ memory has been allocated or a c++ object has been created or a visual basic object has been created so because he is not aware of them right or he is not in control of them he cannot clean unmanaged resources so unmanaged objects has to be cleaned by the respective framework or by the respective code for example you can see at this line number 24 actually goes and allocates on uh, uh, you know allocates a memory of uh, i think this is 100 bytes probably right uh in the next line you can see 25 i am freeing up that object i am freeing up that memory right so if there is a unmanaged object or a unmanaged resource then that code is responsible to clean that unmanaged object and not garbage collector garbage collector can only clean uh, objects which are in control of the clr which are created by the dotnet runtime so let's see practically that whether there is a connection between gc and unmanaged memory because what my belief is that when you see a demo your concepts are more clear and in interview you can handle any kind of cross questions very very gracefully right so here is a small piece of code and let us try to run this piece of code you can see what i'm doing out here is i'm allocating actually 5 bytes of memory in a big big for loop right so now let us first understand the total memory of a dotnet application is equal to managed memory plus unmanaged memory i'm 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 flashing the equation on the screen the total memory of a dotnet application is equal to managed memory plus unmanaged memory so what should happen now for this memory garbage collector should not work at all it should be like probably nothing should happen right but this memory does exist right so in the memory i should see it in the total memory i should see there is a kind of a linear increase right must be not be linear but small increases at least i should see and the garbage collector memory should stay as it is so that will conclude that garbage collector and unmanaged memory do not have any kind of direct connection right so i'm going to go and run the profiler so let us see this right so that's it dot net performance counters remember i have talked about the performance counters in the previous part of the video so total memory is indicated by the working set and the garbage collector memory is indicated by the gc heap size right so let us go and press enter guys i'm going to go and close it very fast because my machine does not have enough ram you know i can restart so let me press enter out here and let us see you can see that see that small increase out there i'll just we'll just close it very quickly but you can see that small linear increase uh right i'm going to close it you know i right so let us see the output final okay okay so there it is uh let me go and zoom and show you so that i can make you understand in a better way look at this i'm just zooming up out here right and let me pull down my pen so the first thing this this top one out here is the total memory right and this bottom one what you are seeing is the gc memory right the memory which is created by dotnet objects and clr you can see it is almost flat right but if you see here the memory is rising linearly right so total memory is equal to this is the total memory is equal to this is the unmanaged memory right plus your managed memory right so garbage collector is not working at all to clear this right so unmanaged memory is not 
cleaned by garbage collector it is not cleaned by garbage collector it is the work of that code for example if that code is in c++ then in c++ you have to go and clean the thing if that code is of excel then excel as an application should go and give back that memory to the operating system if you have opened up a sql server connection then it is your job to go and say dot close or dot dispose right it is not the job of garbage collector because he does not deal with unmanaged memory so in the interview when somebody asks you that does garbage collector clean unmanaged objects no no and no explain generations generations you can think are uh, logical buckets you know they are logical buckets and every bucket defines how much old the objects are let me reiterate this definition generations are logical buckets and every bucket defines how much old the objects are right so there are three buckets gc0 gc1 and gc2 right so from this small number to the large number right you know the objects the old the how much old the objects are you know they define it for example the gc0 buckets have short lived objects so objects which are like local variable created quickly and then destroyed quickly right so those kind of objects which are short lived you know they come in gc0 while gc2 has long lived objects and gc1 acts like a buffer you know it acts like a buffer or you can say intermediately old objects you know will actually come out here right so there are three logical buckets so every time an object is created out here they go into these one of these buckets out here so one is gc0 gc1 and gc2 right and the sequence is that from the gc0 has short lived objects and the gc2 has long lived objects right good so now let us try to understand that for this application you can see this code out here how the whole working will work right so you can see there's a big for loop out here right and in this big for loop you can see x object is getting created and then going out of scope getting created and going out of scope we also have one more x object which is at the member level variable and it is a static object please note it is a static object that is a important thing out here right so assume now your application runs for 5 seconds assume it runs for 5 seconds your application has started here it ran for 5 seconds within this 5 seconds assume there are 10 of there are three objects created i know that this for loop can run very fast right but assume that there are three objects created of this x right so we will say that these are local variable objects right three objects l l l define a local variable object right and you can see there is one more object here which is a static object that will also get created so that will also come into gc0 so first thing whenever an object is created the first bucket it will go is gc0 right now after that let us assume now the garbage collector runs remember garbage collector is a background thread you can see down in the diagram i am defining the background thread so let us say garbage collector runs and he says okay i want to go and start cleaning up the object so he first goes and cleans up this local objects out here because these local objects have gone out of scope from here right so the local objects are 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 cleared right then it goes to this static object and he sees that this static object is still needed right so what he does is he promotes this object so he actually promotes this static object and it and he moves it to gc1 okay after that again assume now 5 seconds again your application runs again let's say it creates let's say three local variables again right now let's say again garbage collector comes undetermined remember now you can see here 5 5 seconds garbage collector does not come like in Uh, what you call repeated intervals it comes undeterministically so again the garbage collector runs and says oh like these again the objects are out of scope he goes here right cleans them up right and then he says oh like this static object is still needed he promotes them now to long lived objects right so now it goes to gc2 right so in this way uh garbage collector runs right if the objects tend to stay more in the memory it keeps promoting them right one of the cross questions which the interviewer can ask you here is that why do we need generation what is the whole goal of having generations the whole goal of having generations is performance the garbage collector performance improves how does it improve so think about it 
let's say the garbage collector comes 100 times and cleans the memory so garbage collector is is undeterministic we don't know when it will come but assume that it comes 100 times you know when the application is running it comes 100 times so in this 100 times it will go all the 100 times to gc0 it will probably go just 20 times over here and probably over 10 times over here why because it makes an assumption that if an object is longer in the memory then probably it will stay for a very long time and going and asking again and again that you know are you referenced or not right does not make sense right so with that what happens is where it was scanning 100 objects right now it would only scan probably 20 objects or 30 objects at a given moment right so th this way the garbage collector improves performance so performance the whole goal of having generations is that you know uh, improving performance so the 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 assumption you know what uh, garbage collector makes here is that objects which are short lived right which are short lived it there is a high possibility that they would be uh, dereferenced very fast objects which are long lived you know they will stay for a long time so again going and asking again and again that the longer objects you know that are you referenced or not you know just decreases the performance so now let us go and see a demo of it right let us see that how this gc0 and gc1 and gc2 gc2 actually work right so uh, you can see here there's a big for loop again and it is going and instantiating this some class object right so here what will happen now the objects will be created faster and then destroyed faster right why because this x object will go out of scope you know after this curly bracket right so probably we should see larger number of objects in gc0 and gc1 and very very few objects in gc2 right so let us see uh, so i'm going to go and say debug we'll say start the profiler right performance profiler and let us choose the performance counters so you can see before running the profiler uh, it just compiles the application so we are now interested more uh, you can see there is a gc0 gc1 and gc2 uh, counts you know but more than the counts I think we should look at the size so let's go and look at the size out here right so you can see GC0 GC1 and GC2 right so let us press enter let us see what happens so if you see out here very quickly you will see that uh, the GC0 size is almost constant but look at the GC0 as well as the uh, gc2 size is almost constant you know means they are almost constant but look at gc1 you know it is it is increasing and the objects are getting destroyed increasing and objects are getting destroyed so it is possible that the objects are getting promoted to this buffer to the intermediate buffer out here but they are getting destroyed and uh, what do you call destroyed and created you know fast you know which says that uh, that's why there are more objects in Gen 1 than Gen 0 and Gen 2, right? Now let us go and make some tweak in the code. So I'm going to go and close this, right? Uh, let us do like this, you know, let us go and add this. Uh, you can see that there is a, uh, we have this list out here, right? So I'll just give a name my list, right? So let us go and add uh, this object to my list. So what will happen now? All the objects will now will never be referenced right so they will always be needed so let us see what happens so i'm going to go and say add here and in other words all the x objects now will be needed until the application runs why because you are adding to a static object static object is like a global object right so now here what should happen is we should see a lot of objects in gen 2 right we should see a lot of objects in gen 2 so let us see so i'm going to go and say debug uh, performance profiler so in other words now what should happen here is that the objects are needed a longer time in the memory so eventually what will happen is many objects will get promoted to gen 2 so let us see that happens or not so i'm going to go and press enter keep a watch on the window out there and you can see that many objects are now in gen 2 the gen 2 objects are increasing exponentially and you can look at you know the gen 0 and gen 1 objects are lower in number and they are getting promoted very fast to gen 2 right so you can see at the right side this it, this gen 2 objects are increasing more look at the right side of my mouse but while the gen 1 gen 0 and gen 1 are not right why because the objects are staying more time in the memory and they have got promoted
what is the best place to clean unmanaged objects let us say you have a class out here right so this is a dotnet class and this dotnet class will get cleaned by the garbage collector so once this class is unreferenced it will be cleaned by the garbage collector but let us say that this class is using some file handle or a sql connection or a com object right or doing something like this you know allocating some object uh, allocating some memory you know from using some dotnet api then which is the best place in this class you know where you will go and put your cleanup for unmanaged objects right so definitely that is the destructor right so in this destructor uh, we can go and we can write uh, what you call cleanup code for unmanaged objects right but this answer is not so straightforward actually right so the next question comes is that if you are just using a vanilla destructor right again let's just quickly uh, before i move ahead what is a destructor a destructor is nothing but uh, so we have constructors and destructors constructors executes you know uh, when the object instance is created right so the first time when the object instance is created the constructor get ex executed and when the object is going out of reference or when it is getting cleaned up then the destructor gets fired right so destructor is when the object is if you want to go and put some cleanup code that's where, where you know you will use a destructor right so destructor logically is where you will go and you will put the cleanup code for unmanaged objects but remember that this is not so straightforward right okay guys it is almost 30 minutes now so congratulations to you and congratulations to me also right that we have come here till 30 minutes of this tutorial now as a teacher as a trainer right we get motivated if if people are seeing our videos right so if you have reached till this 30 minutes you know please go ahead and tag me on linkedin saying that yes you know we are seeing your contents we are watching your contents keep creating such of con such kind of contents right that help us to get motivated right so in case you have reached here till this 30 minutes please see my linkedin profile it is flashed on the screen go ahead and tag me saying that you are watching this video right so guys the next question now how does garbage collector behave when we have destructor right very interesting question so let us get started so the next question which can come here is that what is the effect of putting a destructor on garbage collector means how does garbage collector behave you know when he sees a destructor in a class right fine now if you see let us do like this let me go and comment this destructor out here and let me go and uh, run this uh, you know run this code so you can see this code out here you know this is the same old code i'm just creating an instance destroying it creating an instance destroying it right so let us see the output of this code and then we will see the output without with the destructor okay so this is without the destructor so i'll just go and run we will run it for a minute right we'll just run it for a minute and we will mostly uh, look into gen 0 gen 1 and gen 2 okay so these three things we will have a look very keenly we will run it for a minute okay so there it is so you can see it is uh, 15 seconds 17 seconds 18 seconds so what we'll do is we'll do a benchmarking we will run this for a minute we will see that how the output of gen 1 gen 2 and gen 0 is without a destructor and how it is with a destructor right So you can see those objects getting created, destroyed, created, destroyed. Look at those sharp edges, created, destroyed, created, destroyed, right? So I'm going to go and close this. You can see 57 seconds, 58 seconds, 59 seconds, one minute. Close it, right? Great. So remember this report out here, if we can rename this report, is it possible? Fine. You can see this report, uh, which is saved out here. This is uh, without the destructor right now let me go and put a destructor out here <clears throat> so i'm going to go and uncomment this right and uh, let me now go and see without a destructor interesting interesting right again we will run it for uh, a minute out there and let us see what happens and remember gen 0 gen 1 and gen 2 right so there it is yeah right and i'll just press enter because after pressing enter it starts the 
it starts at big for loop right now you can see uh, one thing which is very noticeable if you see out here the objects were very sharp growing at the top and then just going going bottom going top going bottom right look at this over here it is going like but it is not cleaning up everything it is going up it is not cleaning up everything right so you can see that's one point right and the next thing you know which i want to highlight out here is the objects you know which are created in gen 2 in gen 2 right you can see uh objects are getting cleaned up like okay okay let 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 this let this one minute finish you know and then i will put a one to one comparison so that it is one minute has finished let us see the comparison okay so let us put a comparison right so there it is let me put them side by side okay i uh, okay first thing so we are measuring the size more yeah so let me take a print screen okay so the first thing which i want you to notice is right over here is look at look at this you know the gen 0 here has 24 gen 1 has 82944 it is a five digit gen 2 is a six digit this is 0 this is 1 this is 2 right remember this is without the destructor this is without the destructor and this is with the destructor right now look at the gen 0 size over here and gen 1 size over here right so you can see the gen 0 size is all okay it is 24 that is matching with this right but look at the gen 1 size the gen 1 size is remember i said this is just five digit look at it this is one two three four five six seven digit seven digit look at this this is again seven digit right here this was six digit actually approximately this was six digit so seven seven digit that means that many objects you know went to gen 1 and gen 2 many means many or, or i'll say rather we can conclude out here is that the garbage collector was reclaiming the objects very slowly right or it was delaying the object reclamation with the destructor very slowly as compared to without the destructor right so if you see and this is very much visible out here you can see in gen 1 you know there was a sharp rise and sharp down uh, you know it was sharply coming down this is when without the destructor it was rising sharp but at the same time it was rising down very sharp but look at this it was rising sharp up in the same way but when it was going down it was going not like down like this it was it was keeping some objects and then keeping up right so uh, the the point here is that you know with the destructor with the destructor garbage collector is delaying the object reclamation right so why is it happening so let us try to understand right so uh, what happens now right with the destructor right first thing what happens without the destructor very easy so let us say you have gen 0 gen 1 and gen 2 right so new objects come here right they come and they sit here right and then the objects get destroyed right so must be some objects get promoted why not some gets promoted right and then later on they get destroyed as fast as possible okay good but now what happens here is right let us try to understand so here zero one and two right so let us say that this object out here is without a destructor and this object is with a destructor assume right so the application ran and let us assume that both of these objects are dereferenced means they are ready for garbage collection so garbage collector comes and says okay i want to clean them right so he goes first to this object and says okay you are ready for cleanup right and he goes and he cleans them up good right okay but over here now he says oh you have a destructor that means that uh, you would like to first that means that you have some unmanaged object to be cleared so you have some unmanaged object to be cleared so what he does is over here he prom he calls the destructor he calls the destructor and he promotes this object to gen 1 so that means that in this first loop he does not go and 
clean up that object but he calls the destructor and says that okay like I'm giving you time I'm giving you chance to clean that unmanaged objects what you have I in the next run when I come the next time I will clean up right so now next time you know when the garbage collector comes and he says okay you are here in gen 1 and it looks like that everything is done right and then he goes and cleans up the object so what in in other words you know what I'm trying to say is that um, you know must be when it is without a destructor that the garbage collector just takes one run to clean up but when it is with the destructor right garbage collector takes two run to clean up right and that's why we are finding huge number of objects you know getting accumulated in uh, gen 1 and gen 2 right so how do we solve this problem right so first thing yes you know as a best practice you know we would like to go and put the cleanup code in the uh, in the destructor that is right but then you know this garbage collector is taking you know more loops you know to clean up that destructor thing so how do we go and um, solve this problem so let me again reiterate the problem so you have an object out here right so so you have an object out here right there is an object out here this object is unreferenced dereferenced and uh, nobody's using it and it is ready for garbage collection right but at the same time you know he has some unmanaged code you know so he has written in the destructor it has a destructor as well so assume now the garbage collector comes and says think about he's talking with the object and says that hey are you you look to be unreferenced can I garbage collect you the object says that yes you can garbage collect me but you know I need to first run my destructor because I have some unmanaged code like com plus or must be a com code or must be a file handle and so on so garbage collector says okay let me do like this let me go and invoke this destructor out here let it run let it do that cleanup you know whatever it is and I will come next time and he goes away right then he comes next time and he's, he comes back again this is the second time he comes this is the first time and he says hey is the code cleaned up is the unmanaged object cleaned up the object says yes it's cleaned up and then he goes and garbage collects it so that means that because of this unmanaged code he he comes now I have shown here twice you know it is possible that he can come thrice or four times as well but the point is that he does not claim that object in the first go itself that's the whole point so how do we solve it to solve it right we have to tell the garbage collector if we can tell, tell the garbage collector right here itself that I have cleaned the unmanaged code so let us say if we go and clean the unmanaged code and we tell the garbage collector, I have cleaned the unmanaged code you don't have to worry and collect me then it will happen in one loop I repeat this if we can inform the garbage collector right here itself when he says that are you cleaned up you'll say yes I'm cleaned up and don't worry about the destructor that also has been called and cleaned up you just go and collect me and and you know revert this memory back to the operating system right so for that we have to use something called as I dispose method I dispose interface or we also say I dispose pattern right so let us see how we can go and we can code the I dispose pattern right so I'm going to go back here out here and uh, just before I start just before I start this answer right one more question which the interviewer can ask you is that if you have an empty destructor how bad it is it is very bad think about it let us say that you do not have any unmanaged code and for some reason if you have an empty destructor you know unnecessary your objects are there in the memory for a long time for a more longer time you know without any reason right so having an empty destructor is a very very bad practice right okay so we will use the I dispose pattern right so I dispose pattern for that what we do is that we use the interface here I disposable right and we implement this method here dispose right so you can see there's a dispose method and we put up the cleanup code out here so we put up the cleanup code out here so the cleanup code runs right which cleans the unmanaged objects and then we say GC dot suppress finalize this object finalize right what is finalize so before we go to the next question on finalize versus destructor I have a question for all of you guys right the question is that what is my name 
right look at my eyes what is my name right and which is the first book i have written in my career right and uh, very quickly guys you know half of my career has went or half of my life has went into creating interview questions into seeing that you know how a microsoft developer can go to his next level so if he's a junior software engineer how he can become a senior software engineer what kind of problem does he face right and how he can answer that so half of my life has went into that so down below in the comment section you can see many interview question videos me and my team has recorded so we have c sharp interview questions we have angular interview questions we have asp dot interview questions we have sql server interview questions we have uh, power bi and so many other videos please do go do go do go down below and watch those questions and uh, i'm sure that it will help you in your career so now the next question is on garbage collector which is finalize versus destructor now this is one more interview question what is the difference between finalize and destructor finalize is nothing but destructor whenever the destructor runs it calls finalize internally right so finalize is destructor that's it right right so what we are saying here we are saying to the garbage collector we have called the unmanaged object cleanup you don't have to worry about it and suppress the finalize means don't run the destructor don't run the destructor don't wait for the next time clean me up now itself because i have called the dispose method i have cleaned my unmanaged objects so please don't call the destructor you know i i will i am guaranteeing you that the unmanaged objects are cleared and here you know what the developer has to do is he has to go and call here x dot dispose right so he has to call it x dot dispose saying that okay everything is done right now if we go and if you run this so let us go ahead and run run this right so what should happen now is what should happen now is that we should be able to see that you know the objects are not going like you know seven times or it is not going seven digit and it is having those sharp ups and downs right so let us see if we see that right so i'll say gen 0 gen 1 gen 2 size right and uh, let us press enter and let us see if everything is like is everything if the objects are getting destroyed like without the destructor right so there it is you can see it has started running keep your eyes on these digits as well you can see here we have a six digit but we don't have a seven digit and you can see out here sharp rise sharp fall sharp rise and sharp fall if you remember the previous uh, uh, image you know where we we did not have this kind of sharp rise and we had you know almost seven seven digit in both generation two and generation one and you can see at this moment we are having almost like five digit in generation one and uh, six digit in generation two right so this indicates that it is not waiting for the second time or third time to clean the object it is cleaning up right itself at that time right this is called as the dispose pattern so the interviewer can ask you in with different flavors saying that what is the importance of i disposable he can ask you what is a dispose pattern he can ask you that if you have a destructor how can you improve performance so there are various ways or there are various flavors of this question right now one thing which can come into your mind is that what if the developer forgets to call dispose right so if the developer forgets to call dispose right what will happen is from the destructor dispose will be called so what will happen over here we have said gc dot suppress finalize right so if the developer calls this code out here right fine everything is good but if it does not call the code if it does not call the code then the garbage collector will come twice thrice and he will go and he will call the finalize or the destructor and internally that will go and do the cleanup right so uh, easy right so this is called as the dispose pattern what is the use of using statement you can see here i have used a using statement and it says that using we are creating the object out here and it has a scope right so basically what is the use of this using statement please don't confuse this using statement with this one this one is for the namespaces but this one is for something else so the using statement the using statement defines a scope you can see here it has defined a scope at the end of which an object will be disposed so using statement defines a scope at the end of which that object will be disposed so this object x out here will be disposed he will actually internally call the dispose method automatically and clean the unmanaged object so specifically if you have any object you know which has unmanaged object 
then you should be using the using keyword out here right so you can see here what will happen is you know before this scope ends he will internally call the dispose so this he is defining a scope and says that the object will go out of scope after this curly bracket and he will call the dispose method himself so if we if we go and if we run this if we go and if we just see the output we will we will see the same output you know where the objects are getting created and destroyed and created and destroyed so if we go and just see the sizes of the generation we will have the same uh, thing so that's why you know, a lot of people say that it is it is a good practice you know to write using statements you know specifically for objects which have unmanaged objects to be cleaned right so if you have unmanaged objects to be cleaned you should be using a using statement it looks very clean also it looks uh, very organized as well as you know the developer does not have to remember that he has to call dispose right so if i press enter out here i should see the same output the first thing i should see sharp rises and sharp cuts out here which indicates that the objects are getting created created fast and destroyed fast you can see this sharp downtrends out here indicates that the objects are getting created fast and destroyed also fast also if you see down below you will see that we don't see those seven digit uh, thing you know if, remember when we did not have a dispose method when we did not use the dispose pattern we were seeing seven seven digits of objects in uh, sizes in generation one and generation two why because you know the objects were getting promoted right so remember using statement defines a scope using statement defines a scope and uh, defines a scope you know after which the object will be disposed or he will call the dispose method automatically can we force garbage collector to run yes you can you can go and you can call gc.collect and by using gc.collect you can not only force the whole garbage collector to run but you can also say to the garbage collector that you want to run generation 0 you want to collect generation 0 or you want to collect generation 1 or you want to collect generation 2 and so on right yes so you can use gc.collect and you can force the garbage collector to run now the next question the interviewer is surely going to ask you is that so is it a good practice to force the gc to run so here's my answer for this you know uh, frankly you no know, uh, garbage collector or gc is a very smart beast it runs undeterministically uh, depending on a lot of factors like you know if the memory is stressed or the operating system is starving for memory or application has become slow and many other factors so it look, looks at all these factors and it runs so i think i think you know fiddling around with gc is not recommended at least in my 20 years of experience I have never used this gc.collect method, right? Yes, the maximum method which I have used of gc is gc.suppress finalize, you know, when we are working with unmanaged objects. So the answer here is no, it is not a good practice to call gc.collect, right? It, it, it does its works perfectly well and we should just allow it to run at the background and do its task. Garbage collector is very much connected with memory. So one of the questions, uh, connected questions, you know, interviewer can ask you is that if your application is having memory issues, how to detect it? And once you know that there is a memory issue, how can we know the source of the issue, right? So for that, again, we're going to use the profiler, right? So here it is. What I've done here is you can see here I've created a, a static list, a my list out here. And when I'm looping through this for loop, I'm adding these objects into that my list right so that is this is a bad code out here it is a code smell right so in other words here what will happen is now the developer has written a code you know where the objects will keep adding to the memory and the application will become slow right so if you have such kind of a code how do you know that you are having a memory issue right so let us go here again let us go and debug and let us start the performance profiler now this time you know we will not be tracking the performance counters but we will track you know dotnet object allocation tracking so we would like to know that uh, how the dotnet objects are allocated and and in in what way it is done right so i'm going to go and start here so uh, definitely you know when you're talking about uh, if your application is having a memory issue right so let us say that you have an application which is running for uh, running right continuously and suddenly you find that it is becoming slow and if you think that the problem is from the memory then what you can do is that you can track 
the number of live objects out here you can see this is the number of live objects if the number of live objects start increasing um, in a linear way look at this when I press enter now in this case if you see what will happen is uh, so if you if you watch here right I'm going to just close this right so let us close this and let us try to understand this output so you can see first thing okay it's closing so there you can see the profiler has uh, you know the profiler is displaying the report right so what i'll do is i'll take a full full screen snap out here and let us try to analyze this let us try to understand this right let me just keep the necessary things and try to remove the necessary things out here so that we just see what we want okay so yeah so there it is now see the first thing what you can notice out here is that the memory is increasing linearly you can see here the memory is increasing linearly so that means that this is a problem right if it's a good code right then the memory should be like this you know it's it's used it is gone it is it increases it goes it actually goes it it actually wanders in a range you know it is possible that sometimes you know you need memory it goes a little bit top right but then again it has to come down that means that your application is in a good shape in good health but this one is not a good sign right so that is the first way to detect a bad memory right the second thing you can see out here this object delta chain this object delta chain says that basically how much memory has been allocated and how much has been deallocated so you can see here i can see the green signs out here but i don't see the red signs out here so what should happen is it should be green allocated and then deallocated allocated and deal that's a good way that's a that's a healthy sign right but you can see here the objects are getting allocated and allocated but nothing is getting deallocated as such right again a bad sign so this is definitely you know calling for problem now the next question comes is that okay how do we know right you know where the problem is you can see here in the allocation it shows very clearly this some class object is of a huge size you can see it is almost uh, uh, six digit you can see even the string object is of eight uh, six digit must be that is also a concern but very clearly you can see that the sum class is the problem out here right so yes now you you can see something like you know string objects and string builder and so on uh, that also you need to hunt right but this sum class is surely a problem right so very quickly answering that question how do we know if there is a memory issue if you find you know such kind of a linear increase right it is surely causing for problem and then go and watch for allocations in your profiler and and see that you know which are the most heavily allocated objects and then try to do a code review around the same explain memory leak memory leak is a memory issue or it is a situation you know wherein the memory consumed by an application so if you have an application running uh, the memory consumed by the application uh, should be returned back to the operating system right so as soon as the application exits it should return back this memory to the operating system but when you talk about memory leak right it is a situation where the memory consumed by the application is not returned back to the operating system even when the application exits so even when the application gets unloaded the memory is not returned back to the operating system so that is termed as a memory leak now the next question the interviewer can ask you is that he will say that so we have garbage collector out here and uh, because we have a garbage collector which makes sure that any kind of objects you know which are created in the uh, created by dot net is 1001 percent removed later on by the garbage collector so because we have garbage collector in dot net can we confirm that we can never have memory leak in a c-sharp application or in a dot net application let me repeat the question here you know in case of dot net you know we have the garbage collector and the garbage collector make will make sure that any kind of objects which are created you know will be reclaimed back you know once it loses reference so can we confirm or can we say that because we have garbage collector in dot net you know we will never have memory leak issues in dot net so the answer is no we can have memory leak issues because the complete memory of a dot net application is equal to unmanaged memory so unmanaged memory which is created by uh, by c++ application by excel uh, you know by you know when you do such kind of marshall dot global 
right or when you are using a file handle so unmanaged memory plus the managed memory which are created by the dotnet objects so yes the garbage collector can only clean objects you know which are managed only this he can do it but this thing is not in his hand so it is very much possible that if some objects out here is not released back the the memory is not released back right then you can have a memory leak right so i repeat here total memory of a dotnet application is unmanaged memory plus managed memory this managed memory is taken care by garbage collector but this one will be taken care by the respective technology you know how they will clean it right so sometimes what happens is this unmanaged memory is not cleared and your application exits garbage collector clears this right uh, religiously but this is there pending and then you can have a memory leak so trying to you know confirm that answer can you have memory leak in dotnet application even though if you have garbage collector yes you can have because you have unmanaged memory and if unmanaged memory is not cleared it is not claimed back it is not given back it is possible that it can lie in the uh, you know somewhere and it is not given back to the operating system so let us run the profiler and let us see the output of this code so let us go ahead to debug performance profiler and let us see what is the output out here right so what we'll do here is we'll track two performance counters one is the total memory right so the total memory we can know by the working set okay and another one is the gc heap size right so let us see what happens here you can see total memory is at the top and gc heap size is at the bottom right so let us see out here let us press enter let us see so there it is you can see uh, the working set is increasing but look at the gc heap size the gc heap size is increasing decreasing increasing decreasing you know it is um, it, it is not increasing increasing in a linear way right let me stop this and let us try to analyze this output right so if you see out here we can see the top graph this top graph out here this one is the total memory so this one here i'm sorry for the this one here is the total memory and this one here is of the cleaned by the garbage collector means the managed memory i'm sorry for the blink you can see it is blinking right uh, sorry for the blink so you can see first thing here the total memory is increasing and look at the managed memory it is increasing then decreasing increasing then decreasing increasing then decreasing so that means that it is in control isn't it so if you see here what is happening is so total memory i'm sorry for the blink is unmanaged plus managed so what is happening here is the total memory is increasing but the unmanaged memory is fluctuating managed memory is fluctuating so which means that which means that you have a problem with unmanaged memory so there is a leak of a unmanaged memory right so this is how you can detect you know that your application is having a memory leak or not so as such garbage collector will clean objects you know which are unreferenced period you know he will take care of that right but the unmanaged memory if you have not taken care of then you should see such kind of a pattern where the total memory is increasing the garbage collector is working normally so that means that there is a problem with the unmanaged memory explain strong reference and weak reference a weak reference permits the garbage collector to collect the object while still allowing the application to access the object i repeat this answer a weak reference permits the garbage collector to collect the object but still it allows the application to access the object until the garbage collector collects it right so so you can see out here uh, in order to use weak reference you can see this is the weak reference you have to create the instance of a weak reference object right and you can see i have created here a object called as obj2 and i am saying and i am giving this object obj2 as a reference to the 
weak reference object so what will happen now after this curly bracket after this curly bracket this obj2 will go it is marked for garbage collection right remember after this point so let us say this code executes and let us say let us say let us say at 10 am this object obj2 is marked for garbage collection right now assume that at 10:30 am assume i'm just assume uh, garbage collector will come definitely before that but let's assume that at 10:30 am garbage collector comes and cleans the obj2 object and and gives that memory back to the operating system now within this time this 30 minutes right if you ever think that i want to reference the object back you can refer it right so basically a weak reference means a weak reference permits a garbage collector to collect the object right it says that okay you know this object is out of scope you can collect it but in case you know for some reason if i need it i would like to get it that's what the weak reference is for and a strong reference is a normal one for example obj2 this is a strong reference right so obj1 i'm sorry so if you look at obj1 obj1 is created here and after that you know no one can access it there is no way we can access it if you know after this uh, out of scope when it goes out of scope right we cannot access it garbage collector will go and collect it right so weak reference permits the gar permits the garbage collector to collect the object but at the same time you know within that time limit of the object going out of scope within that time you know the object goes out of scope right and the garbage collector runs within this time i can still access the object and get the values or i can reference object back this is called as weak reference right so weak reference and strong reference strong reference is normal object creation and for weak reference we have to use the weak reference class and we have to set the target right and you can see out here we can also go and we can check you know uh, that if the object is alive or not so you can see here we can check is alive right so if it is alive then only access the target so such kind of uh, properties you know this uh, weak reference has you know so target and is alive okay in order to solidify concepts around weak reference here is a small sample code which i will run the whole goal here is that to understand weak reference in more detail to see some practical examples you know why because if you get any kind of cross question during the interview you should be able to handle it right so you can see here what i'm doing is uh, this in this first line out here i'm creating an object of weak ref i'm creating object of weak reference called as weak ref right and you can see down there is a function out here in this function what i'm doing is i'm creating an object t which is of type sum class so there is a sum class uh which is which whose object i am creating and this sum class will go out of scope from here it will go out of scope from here out of scope from here but before you know going before going out of scope i am assigning it to the weak reference so the weak reference now has a pointer you know towards this object right so you can see i am calling this fun one out here and this t object i have assigned to weak reference now you can see i am having a loop here while 1 equal to 1 which is a continuous loop and here i am checking that if the weak reference is alive or not so because remember ah after after this point after this point you know after this point you have said that this object can be this object is marked for garbage collection now somewhere down the line later you know uh, the garbage collector will run over here right and clean the object and in between this time in between this time you know right from the object going out of scope and the garbage collector collecting it you can always use this weak reference and get access of the object right so you can see here i'm just checking that it is alive or not so for this point from this point to this point the is alive will be true and after this point the is alive will be false you know so just a simple check out there and you know i'm trying to also provoke the garbage collector because the garbage collector will not run just like that right so you can see here i have i'm creating a an a, a object an empty object of gc out here of some class so that you know many objects get created and the garbage collector is forced to run okay so uh, so this line out here you know don't think about it too much this is just to provoke the garbage collector so that you know many objects are created and it runs right so that means that if you want to go and check if the object is alive or not what you will use 
you will use the is alive uh, property out here and if it is alive so you can say okay if the object is alive then get the access to the object and start using it right okay so let us go and run this code and let us see what happens so I'm going to go and run this code so first the is alive will be true for some time but after some time the is alive will be false right so I'm going to go and run out here and let us see what happens so there it is it is running so you can see is alive is true true and true and remember that this GC will is getting provoked this line number 20 I'm provoking so what will happen once the GC runs it is false so there it is it is false now so that means now once the object is false there is no way you can now go and claim the object you cannot go and have reference to that object so weak reference what it does is it basically you know the time between the object being marked out of scope and the time between the object is garbage collected you can go and you can get the object back now the next obvious question comes is that when should we use weak reference right right so personally what I feel is that weak references should be used you know when uh, you want to do things like caching or you want to things do things like object pooling object pooling means okay the object has gone out of scope you know but you know if if I, if I want to access it you know I, I should be able to access it right so mostly for caching and pooling it is used but please note that you should be very careful garbage collector is undeterministic right so you need to use these flags of is alive you know the code can become complicated okay so many times what happens is you say okay like I want to do caching but uh, it, it's not that that caching for the whole time you know it's it depends you know if I need it I will I want to get it right so you more than caching I will say pooling pooling means for example now if an object you know it is taking if it if it is a heavy memory object you know if it is a object you know which takes a lot of time for getting constructed right so if the constructor is having uh, sorry for this if the constructor is having some heavy duty out there so the, if the constructing part of that object or the construction of the object is taking too much resources then what you would like to do you would like to say okay let's create the object but you know I don't want to again go back and do that whole construction so in case if the object is alive I want to get a reference of it right so for pooling purpose also I feel object pooling purpose you know I feel that this is still a good choice right so that was a demonstration of weak reference and I hope that uh, this would clarify the top the, the issues around weak reference the questions around weak reference okay guys so that brings us to the end of this video and I hope that you enjoyed all the questions you know which I have covered around garbage collector and uh, happy learning happy job hunting please subscribe to our channel because we keep uploading you know such kind of videos and I'm sure that these videos will help you in your career. Happy learning, happy job hunting. Thank you.